Welcome. As we do this video blog today, we have arrived at the day that has become known as Silent Saturday, that day between the death and burial of Jesus Christ and his glorious resurrection. Uh, we've all had Silent Saturday, so those days when we lose sight of the promises and the victory of God in our lives. In, in Luke 24, we have the story of the two men walking on the road to Emmaus and Jesus met them and he asked them, why are you sad? And, and they said to him, we had hoped that he had come to redeem the people of Israel. This was a silent Sunday actually for them. Saturday was over, the resurrection had occurred, the work of redemption was done and yet these men didn't know it and so their countenances were still sad. You have hopes that have led you to disappointment and sorrow. Jesus has the answer to that. And we're going to look at his name, Goel, the Redeemer, today. The Old Testament gives us a glimpse of our Redeemer. The New Testament reveals our Redeemer. Mary recognized that in the song of praise she sang while she was pregnant with Jesus. And she said, blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. The Bible translates several words as redeem. Each has a little bit different flavor. Each progressively describes our redemption. Redeem can simply mean to set free. As believers, we have been set free from the bondage of sin and the grip of Satan, the enemy of our soul. It can also mean to buy back. Eve sold us out in the garden, but lest we be too quick to blame her, you know you and I would have done the very same thing. Our sinful choices walked us right into the enemy's grip. And then it can mean to loose what is bound and then our redemption goes a little bit deeper. To set free for oneself. In other words, to set a person free so they no longer belong to another, but they would belong to that one who has redeemed them. See, a man could buy a slave, redeeming them from one owner, only to make that slave his. Now, depending on the new owner, that can be a good or a bad thing. But with our Redeemer, Jesus, it is always a good thing to belong to him. And then to purchase for the purpose of selling or reselling. Ephesians 1.13 reminds us that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. No one will ever remove God's seal of ownership on you or me. We are his. See, there's no resale price on you or on me. And then one more, my favorite, to purchase from one place to dwell in another or to take that person from one place to another. Refugees can be offered redemption of sorts and escape from a cruel regime, but they've simply been set free, free to figure out life on their own and, and often they return to bondage. But Jesus redeemed us for a purpose. Colossians 1.13 says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. God has redeemed us at a great cost, the blood of his son, for a purpose, to convey us or, or change both our place and our position, our standing into the kingdom of the son of his love, into the place where we are no longer slaves but recipients of all that belongs to our King. Galatians 4, 5 says, His purpose was to redeem those who are under the law, that's you, that's me, that we might receive the adoption as sons. See the transfer God has made here? The kinsman redeemer in the book of Ruth has the power to take her from her old life and bring her into his new life. And Ruth wanted that. The amazing thing is her redeemer, Boaz, he wanted her. Consider Job in the midst of great loss. See, Job still had hope 
Why? Because he encouraged himself with what he knew. So he said this, for I know my Redeemer lives and he shall stand at last on the earth. My Redeemer. I read a story of a young boy who went swimming out in the ocean and he swam out too far. And what happened was a shark came and viciously bit him and, and bit his whole leg off. And his dad took a big baseball bat, swam out in the water and he clubbed that shark and he released his son. Took him to the hospital with a severed leg and they were able to sew that leg back on. Now, that's very similar to what Jesus has done for us. He has rescued us and he's not only put us back together, we get new legs and, and we no longer just can walk, we can run. Because he has redeemed us, he's done that kind of healing in our lives. When you praise him as a redeemer, I encourage you, make it personal. Lord, you are my Goel. You are my Redeemer. May the Lord bless you as you rejoice in the fact that your Redeemer lives.